Many thousands of years ago, the Warhammer world was a different place. Most of the planet was covered in inhospitable ice sheets, with the warmer regions around the equatorial band being strongly contested between many primordial beasts and civilizations. This bleak situation was what the Old Ones first saw as they drifted by in their massive silvered ships, plying through the cold void of space like a wooden vessel through the ocean. They beheld the world and saw in it a unique potential, deciding in that moment that this world would play a crucial part in their plans. The Old Ones' first act was to craft massive gateways at either pole, allowing them to transport even their massive ships to this new world from great distances. Then, they used powers beyond comprehension to shift the planet's very orbit, driving it closer to the sun. The great sheets of ice covering this world melted away, and soon verdant forests began growing all over. Pleased with their work, the Old Ones continued with their plans. First, they created the Lizardmen to carry out many tasks. The Saurus cut down all of those unfitting for the Great Plan, while Skinks constructed great cities by the labor of the Croxagore. The Slawn oversaw all of these activities, being the only creatures capable of withstanding the presence of the Almighty Old Ones. As the Slawn guided the plan, cities were constructed all over the planet, funneling the Earth's natural energy into a geomantic web covering the world. This web contained unlimited power, and the Old Ones reached into it freely to power their great works. Once the cities were built, the Old Ones prepared for the next phase. The world had become a paradise, the Saurus having eliminated all but the occasional greenskins and mighty creatures that retreated deep into the earth. Thus, the Old Ones began to shift the earth's landmass, breaking up the mighty supercontinent into many smaller ones and gradually shifting them over the course of thousands of years. Sadly, they would never complete this task. As the Old Ones had been freely entering and exiting the great portals hovering above the planet's poles, Something began to stir in the realm beyond the gateways. Something ancient and terrible came to resent those passing through its realm. In this swirling madness, death came for the Old Ones. The Old Ones were beings of order and near omnipotence, yet they were not prepared for the birth of chaos. Although they tapped into the energy of this strange spiritual realm, the Old Ones always struggled to contain its power and finally found themselves engaged in a war against creatures born of pure energy. It is believed that the younger races were created in hopes of making something able to fight back against chaos. In their first attempt, they raised up the island of Ulthuan from the ocean's floor and created the Elves, who learned magic from the godlike first generation Slon themselves. Despite being dexterous and intelligent, the Elves were not as resistant to the corrupting forces of magic as the Old Ones had hoped. Thus, they were the first failure. The next creation were the Dwarves, a stalwart and strong race, not only resistant to magic, but able to craft masterpieces with supernatural power. To them, the Old Ones taught the art of mining the earth and crafting runes. However, the same traits that made the Dwarves determined survivors also gave rise to stubbornness, avarice, and insularity. Thus, they were the second failure of the Old Ones. Around this time, it is believed the war in the spiritual realm grew worse, as the Old Ones became more desperate in their attempts to create the perfect race. They crafted the race of man, an adaptable and prolific people, able to conquer any challenge and adapt to any land. They were perhaps intended to be the Old Ones' greatest design, but time ran out, and thus they remained incomplete. In the final stages of the Cosmic War, the Old Ones gave rise to two extremely uncompleted races being the Ogres and the Halflings. Although different in size and strength, both races shared similar traits of fondness of eating and resistance to magic, as well as their less than stellar intellects. Finally, the war reached its climax and the Polar Gates imploded, shattered fragments hurled down upon the earth in flames. Whether this was caused by a great influx of energy, or the Old Ones on purpose, is unknown. In this moment, the age of the Old Ones seemingly ended, and the world fell to mortal hands. It is unknown what happened to the Great Ones. Perhaps they were destroyed in the explosion and cut down by chaos. Perhaps they were possessed and twisted into abominations. Or perhaps they abandoned the world, realizing it was hopeless, and fled. 
It is even possible that they used the last of their power before perishing to set events in motion in an attempt to one day save their beloved world. Thus ends the history of the Old Ones and begins the myth. The Old Ones are without a doubt the most mysterious gods ever to exist in the Warhammer world. Few records remain about them, but from what we can read, they appear to be an extremely diverse and powerful race. The Old Ones, despite being godlike, were most certainly not gods in the sense that the Warhammer world has come to understand. The rest of the gods covered in this series tend to be beings created by the emotions, beliefs, and or worship of the mortal beings of the Warhammer world, rather than the physical presence the Old Ones themselves had. That being said, the Old Ones were beings unmatched in power, with the exception of the entirety of Chaos itself, something that even the current Chaos Gods are mere fractions of. That being said, despite their mysterious nature, we do have some information regarding individual Old Ones, so I'll just kind of go down the list that we have, and let's talk about what we know of them. We'll begin with the most prolific and well-known of the Old Ones. First among them, and most well-known, is Tlonxla, Warrior God, who rode a mighty sky chariot into battle. He is the only Old One to actually leave behind a relic in the mortal plane. His spear is now wielded by Krokgar, ancient Scar Leader of Mazdamundi's hosts. Being pierced by this spear causes one to suffer doom-laden visions that make any go mad. It's especially effective against the forces of demons and the undead. Next are the remainder of the well-known pantheon. Jodl, the Selector of Greatness. Quetzal, the Defender and Divine Protector. Chotek, the Lord of the Sun. Tepok, God of Wisdom and Magic. Potek, he who wards against the supernatural. Tzunki, Lord of Water, Agility, and Keen Eyesight. Tlaxcotl, the Impassive, the Patient, and the Determined. Hanchi, the Jaguar God of the Earth and Night, and Itzel, God of the Cold-Blooded Beasts. These are the most well-known of the Old Ones, and actually have notable traits assigned to them that come up in the Lizardmen's worship. However, all of them have been lost, and little is known of them besides what they represented and the occasional artifact they wielded. Now we'll look at the Lesser Pantheon, but still Old Ones that we actually know a little bit about. First is Tzitzkladi, he who grants strength to a warrior's arm. Jolanka, the lost. Zapati, god of vengeance. Joka, the arbiter of duty, giver of strength. Uxmak, the messenger of the gods. Coxodon, the predator, stalker of the jungle. Quietli, warrior god, protector of the true way. And finally Rig, the outcast, also known as the mother of Kaleth who is the only old one ever designated to be female, though because this means nothing to the genderless lizardmen, they never bothered to investigate the strangeness of that claim. And finally, we move on to the old ones who are known in name only. Konaxla, Inhamax, and Yuxa. Likely, there are many other old ones whose names have just quite frankly been forgotten. For the lizardmen lost many of their names and worships when the Old Ones were destroyed and chaos caused all of the Slon's thought to go into a deep fog. However, there is one other being that the Lizardmen worship who may or may not be an Old One, depending on how you look at things. And it's time we give the Serpent God his due. Sotek, the Serpent God, is the only divine being active in the Lizardmen pantheon. Whether or not he is indeed an Old One is quite a speculative question, on one hand, he is the antithesis of Chaos, having come to the Lizardmen's aid in striking down the Skaven, and continues to represent a divine force that will destroy the races that Chaos brought into the world. On the other hand, how could he have survived if all the other Old Ones perished? If Sotek is an Old One, that opens up a whole can of worms into how he came back to the world. Perhaps he hid deep under the earth until the Lizardmen awoke him. Or perhaps the mighty twin-tailed comet in the sky that heralded the coming of the Serpent God was indeed the Old One himself returning. However, this seems unlikely, as the Slon knew nothing of Sotek besides him being mentioned on a single plaque, 
and likely would have been known to the mage priests had he been an active old one in times prior. The next theory would be that Sotek is in fact a god, in the traditional Warhammer sense, of a being born by intense emotions, worship, or belief. He may well be the incarnation of the deep hatred the Lizardmen have for all the children of Chaos, be they demon, human, or skaven. However, there are a number of problems with this theory. First, the Lizardmen do not feel emotion in any manner relatable to other mortals. Obviously this isn't concrete as the lore contradicts itself frequently on this point, but looking from a wide perspective, the Lizardmen are supposed to be cold, impassive beings. Second, Sotek was specifically mentioned in the sacred plaques of Chakwa. This means the Old Ones knew he would come and planned for it, with their spawnings of red-crested skinks, along with a prophecy to help guide the Lizardmen in their time of need. If he were just a spontaneous creation of the Lizardmen's ire for other races, surely the Old Ones wouldn't have known about him, and much less would have planned to aid him coming into the world by supplying the Lizardmen with specific crested skinks to help resist disease and fight back against the Skaven. The last and most likely theory is that Sotek was an entity created by the Old Ones to attack the forces of Chaos in their absence. He may have been created in the final days of the Cosmic War against Chaos, meant to be unleashed, but perhaps there wasn't enough time or power for them to fully implement him into action. The Lizardmen, led by the Prophet of Sotek, however, followed the plaque which may have been the final piece falling into place that allowed Sotek to come roaring into the world from a mighty volcano, helping defeat the Skaven and chase them off Lustria. Ultimately, however, the Old Ones are gone and will never return. A strange, beast-like race of godlike scientists and sorcerers, they use powers unmatchable even by the Chaos Gods themselves and created nearly every race that now walks the Warhammer world. Perhaps Sotek is indeed the last of their number, or maybe even members of the other pantheons were actually old ones in different guises. However, regardless of that, truly they were the grand designers of the Warhammer world and sowed the seeds that may one day defeat the forces of chaos. Thanks for joining me for the history and some speculation on the old ones the eldest gods of the Warhammer world, and the pantheon of the Lizardmen. This is the first in a series to cover each of the pantheons, so we'll get around to everyone soon enough. So, how about a vote? Write in the comment section below which god or race pantheon you would like to see covered in the next Gods and Myth video. And yes, Nagash classifies as a god because he's technically the creator of the vampire accounts. So go ahead and type whoever you'd like to see. Some individual gods will get their own video as there's a lot more about them. Examples being like maybe one of the Chaos Gods or Sigmar. And some will just cover the entire pantheon like the Elven Gods. However, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe with, and share the video with your friends. Um, if you have any other ideas for things you'd like to see in a video, feel free to just type it down in the comment box. I read every one. Take care. Have a good night.